Welcome to the chapter two workout problem uh, solution video. So in this uh, video, we're gonna go through all three problems for chapter two. Uh, please, before you watch this video, attempt the problems on your own. And, uh, and then after you attempt all three problems, watch through the video and uh, use the video as kind of a help to make sure that you're getting the uh, solutions correct. So first, problem number one says that suppose you are a hermit in the mountains and possess exactly 40 candy bars. Your neighbor Bill on the next mountain is a trapper and he is willing to trade four rabbits for every one candy bar that you are willing to give him. Another hermit neighbor, Patty, is also a trapper and she is willing to trade three rabbits for every one candy bar. On a single figure, which we see in the, with the blue lines below, right? draw budget lines for trading with Bill and for trading with Patty. Put candy bars on the vertical axis. All right, so we see our vertical axis here. So this, this uh, with, the, with the Hershey's right here, this is our candy bars. And as we trade candy bars, so let's, let's put at the very top here uh, 40, right? So we have 40 candy bars right up here. If we keep all of our candy bars and trade none of our candy bars, then we will uh, keep our 40 candy bars, right? But as we start trading candy bars, then uh, there's a mix in here in the middle uh, that where we start giving away candy bars for rabbits and we get more rabbits. So let's ask the question here uh, of what if we were to trade all of our candy bars, let's do Bill first, right? And so he's willing to trade four rabbits for each candy bar. And so how many rabbits are we going to receive if we trade four rabbits for all of our, let's say we trade all of our candy bars, okay, for, for rabbits. That's gonna give us, we're gonna have a point over here of uh, I believe it's gonna be 160, right? Four times 40 is 160 rabbits. And so really the, and I'm gonna, try, I'm gonna try to draw this the best I can. So from 40 to 160 basically is the line and all variations in between, right? Are gonna be, this is the line for trading with Bill. Whoops, there we go. Okay, so this is the line for Bill. Okay. Now let's draw the line for trading with Patty. Let's do it in green here. So the scenario is still the same, right? So if we, in that if we keep all of our candy bars, we're still gonna have 40. So at this point right here uh, with Patty, that, that point is on the same line, right? But with Patty, it's gonna be different because she will trade three candy bars for every, uh, or three rabbits for every candy bar. So not quite as much as, as Bill. And so if we trade 40 candy bars, uh, if we multiply that by three, then that's only gonna get us, let's put right down here, uh, it's gonna give us 120. 120 rabbits at that point and that's trading with patty so now our line with patty is going to look something like this right we're going to we're going to have the line start off here and we're going to go here right so that's our line with for trading with patty is the green line okay and i trying to make it as straight as possible here a little difficult okay so there we go. So this line right here is for trading with Patty. Uh, and there's our two lines, right? So that's that's the first, uh, that's pro uh, that is A on problem set one is to actually draw the lines out. Okay, now the question here in problem two, and we'll flip back to our, our graph that we just drew out is, uh, what is the slope of the budget line for trading with Bill? And what is the slope of the budget line for trading with Patty? Well, we can look We can look at the lines, right? We can tell their slopes are different. And so basically the idea is uh, rise over run, right? That's, that's kind of the, the slope, right? Rise over run. 
running meaning horizontal movement, right? Rise meaning vertical movement, okay? And so, uh, so if we look back at the the vertical movement here, we see that it's it's the max is 40, right? Okay, and the horizontal movement for Bill is 160. So really, what that gives us here is our 40. Okay, and it's actually a negative 40 over 160. Uh, which simplifies as one over four, negative one over four. And so that is our, that's the slope. Okay, it's, it also ends up being our trade-off, okay, or our opportunity cost as well. So uh, Patty, it's the same, same uh, numerator, negative 40, 120 though, it's our denominator. So that simplifies down into negative one third and that's the slope for patty's line okay so which which budget line features a larger set of attainable combinations so it's it's going to be bill's line and this is why okay so bill is more willing right he's he's trading more rabbits per candy bar which gives us an opportunity to consume more so as we, as we look back at the lines here we see that that everything under Everything here. Let me trade. Let me f change my color here real quick. Uh, let's go with purple. Okay. Everything this direction of the line is attainable. It, it's something that we can have. So we can see that the red line gives us more stuff, right? More rabbits, uh, more options. Okay. Patty, on the other hand, right? It starts from here, and this is her. This is the area of trading for Patty or all the options. Bill includes all this area in here between the green and the red line, so it gives us more options. So the, the, the larger set of obtainable combinations is Bill. The last one here, E. If you are going to trade candy bars for, and in this case it's rabbits, right? Rabbits. Uh, would you rather trade with Bill or Patty? Uh, and, and of course, we know the more options, the better. So it's going to be with Bill. Bill is going to be the one that we're going to trade with. Problem number two it says use this information to answer the following four questions. Uh, Marie has a weekly budget of $24. Here's our budget, which uh, she likes to spend on magazines and pies, right? And so with that information, we're going to go to the, our uh, first question. It says, if the price of magazine of a magazine is $4, what is the maximum number of magazines she could buy? Let's look back. So our budget's 24, right? So here's our budget is 24. So how many magazines can she buy? Well, we've got to divide 24 by 4. And that gives us the amount of magazines that she's able to buy. So six magazines. Uh, if the price of a pie is $12, what is the maximum number of pies she could buy in a week? Same thing. This is what we do. We take our total budget, divide by 12. We're only able to buy two pies per week with the budget that is given of $24. So now the question is, is we're, now we're supposed to draw Marie's budget constraint or budget line with pies on the horizon, horizontal. So pies are gonna be down here, pies on the horizontal and magazines on the, on the vertical. So this is our magazines. Let's go ahead and go with our maxes and then we can draw the line pretty easy. So we know our magazine max is six. We know our pies are, we'll say it's two right here, okay? may not be exactly right. So this is our budget constraint. This is our bu budget line. Our budget constraint, meaning that we can consume everything, any combination inside on or inside this line. Anything out here, outside of the line, we cannot consume, right? That's unattainable for us. We just don't have the budget for it. So what is the slope of the line? Again, we're gonna go rise, overrun and that's going to be 
our six, negative six over two. So it's gonna be three. Okay, negative three is gonna be our slope on this one. So what is the opportunity cost for purchasing a pie? So if we purchase a pie, the opportunity cost is, we take our slope and really that becomes our opportunity cost, right? So for one pie, that's, or one pie, that's three magazines. That's our opportunity cost. Okay, now problem number three. Use the following information about the economy of Zootopia to answer the questions below. So in Zootopia, we have laborers. We have rabbit and elephant labor, right here and here. And then our resources is land and water. We're assuming that the labor, uh, labor hours and resources can be used to either produce, uh, produce either carrots or popsicles, but they are limited and cannot be used to produce both simultaneously. So you got to use them one way or the other. So we're, we're assuming that, th that these are the only materials needed to produce carrots and popsicles. Uh, draw the production possibilities frontier curve for these two products. We can do uh, either one, right, on either, gra uh, either axis. We can do, for example, we can do the carrots on this, on the hor uh, vertical, and then we can do the popsicles on this line, or vice versa, it doesn't matter, it doesn't really matter. And so we know that our production possibilities frontier is gonna look something like this. That's what it's gonna look like, but we wanna know what the points are uh, as the uh, production possibilities frontier curve um, intersects. And so in order to figure that out, what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to know the maximum amount of each product that can be produced with our resources. If we were to, if we were to just produce carrots or just produce popsicles and throw all of our labor into one or the other. Okay, so let's go back to our graph here and let's figure it out. So our carrots, it takes two hours of uh, rabbit work, labor, to produce a pound of carrots. So how many carrots can we get with the, with the number of rabbit labor hours that we have? So we have. 26,000 hours, so we're able to get two hours, so that's, we're gonna divide this in half, and this will be uh, 13,000, right, pounds. And popsicles, uh, rabbits, five hours per pound, and so we're able to get 5,200, 200 pounds of popsicles with the rabbit labor. Now the elephant labor, we've, we've got three hours per pound on the carrots. We see that we're able to make 2,000 pounds of carrots with elephant labor. And the elephants are able to make one pound of popsicles per hour, and that's gonna be straight up 6,000. So we can see here with the labor that the elephants really are better at making popsicles than the rabbits are, and the rabbits are way better at making carrots than the elephants are in Zootopia. Now our resources. So we have a certain amount of resources that we need to combine here. Uh, how many carrots can we produce if it only takes one tenth of an acre to produce a pound of carrots? Well, we're able to multiply, right, our acres here. And so it's, we're able to make tons of carrots. 560,000 pounds of carrots. Okay. Uh, and then our popsicles, how many how many pounds of popsicles are we able to make? 224,000. Okay, so resources, really the land resource, we have plenty of land to make carrots or popsicles. That's something we have a lot of in, in Zootopia. Now in water, we're able to make 10 gallons. With 10 gallons of water, we're able to make a pound of carrots. So we can make 4.2 million pounds of carrots. And we can make 42 million pounds of popsicles. So water really isn't the constraint here. We'll come to that at a later question. So if we make carrots, how many carrots can we make if we, if we use all of our elephant and all of our rabbit labor and all the land and all the water that we have? Well, we gotta look at our constraints here. These two combined are basically our constraints. So we're able to make 15,000 pounds of carrots. Okay, so let's flip ahead. So the most carrots that we can make are 15,000 pounds. And now we say how many popsicles 
where if we combine our labor and say all of the rabbits and all of the elephants are working to make popsicles, we're able to make 11,200. So that's our popsicles down here. At this point right here, that's 11,200 pounds of popsicles. So really, what is the most limiting factor in, of production? We, see, we look back here and we say, okay, we have tons of land, tons of water, but really the rabbits and elephant, the labor component is what's holding us back. If we had more rabbits, if we had more elephants, we'd be able to make more of both. And so really our limiting factor here is labor.